Hi, welcome back. Let's talk about how you can draw atomic defects in 2D materials using Blender. So a lot of interesting functionality of 2D materials, in particular the transition metal digelcogenides, is hinged on utilizing atomic defects. This includes vacancy defects, anti-side defects, grain boundaries, uh, substitutional defects, and so on. So it often comes quite handy if you can draw some of these defects for your publications. Today we're going to be using CG Figures Transition Metal Dichalcogenai Monolayer Asset. This is a great point to quickly plug CG Figures fantastic asset library, which he's just released. It's a compendium of all of the assets he's created so far, including the Metal Dichalcogenai Monolayer, which we'll be using today. So I highly recommend that you go download it. You can get it for free, or you can also give a donation to CG Figures to support the fantastic work that he's doing. So here I have the metal dichalcogenide monolayer imported into my scene already with the default settings. In order to view the defects more easily, it's actually worth making these atoms a little bit bigger. And I'm also going to just change the bond size. Just more for artistic discretion, I'm going to change the, the top layer, which will be our chalcogen layer, to yellow. And the middle layer, which should be our transition metal, as a green color. These are currently labeled boron and carbon in the material selection, but you can ignore that for now. First, let's talk about how you can create chalcogen mono vacancies uh, on the top layer of this transition metal dichalcogenide. So essentially what we want to be able to do is select specific atoms on the top layer and delete them as well as delete the bonds that connect to them. So we're going to need to tinker a little bit inside of geometry nodes. So let's go ahead and pull open a new window and make that the geometry node editor. There is an in-depth tutorial on how CG Figures built this in his geometry nodes for scientists videos. So I won't go over exactly how this node tree works. All I'm going to say is that the first part of the node tree on the left is responsible for creating a mesh onto which bonds and atoms are subsequently instanced and created. So in order to control the deletion of certain atoms, we first need to control or delete vertices from the mesh which is being used to instance the atoms and bonds. And that happens in this group called MOS2 creation. And so a lot of the work we're going to do is going to happen inside of this group. So go ahead and select it and press tab to enter the node setup. So all this node setup is doing is creating a mesh frame which forms the basis of the positions for the atoms and also the positions of the bonds. You can actually view this if I I connect directly the output of this group to the group output. So if I go into wireframe mode, you can see this more clearly. All of the vertices here on this mesh constitute positions for atoms and will be used to instance atoms on later. And then the edges that connect these points are basically the positions of the bonds. So in order to be able to create mono vacancies on the top layer, we first need to be able to isolate just the chalcogen atoms on this top layer. So how can we do that? Well, we basically need to isolate the vertices that correspond to this top plane. And then within that layer of points, we need to select a further number to delete so that we can create the vacancies. So go ahead and go back into the MOS2 creation layer. First, apply a bounding box node. This allows me to find the minimum and maximum positions of all of the points. Let's apply a separate XYZ node, and this allows us to access the Z positions at the highest point of this mesh. Now look for a delete geometry node. Plug that into the node tree. What I effectively now want to do is find the position of all of the vertices in particular, by using a separate XYZ, I want to find the Z positions of all of those points and compare them to the maximum Z taken from the bounding box. Where they are equal, I want to delete. And so I plug that into the selection option of the delete geometry. You can see what's happened is that I have been able to delete all of the chalcogen atoms of just the top layer of this transition metal digelcogenide. I now need to apply a further constraint, which is that I don't want to delete all of these chalcogen atoms. I only want to delete a certain number. We can do that by adding a random value node and changing it to Boolean. This allows us to apply a yes or no condition or zero and one condition to every single point. From that, we're going to add a Boolean math and node and say, select only the points which lie on the top plane and is further selected by this random value. If I now plug the output from that and math operation into the delete geometry, you can see that I am now selectively deleting some of the chalcogen atoms on that top layer. And I can control how many of those by controlling the Boolean probability of this random value node. So if I drop the probability all the way down, let's say something like 0.1, we get a very sparse number of chalcogen atoms that are deleted to be able to create our chalcogen mono vacancies. If you're finding this difficult to view, I can just quickly make the atom sizes even bigger so that we can pack them closer together and that makes it a little bit easier to see 
the positions of those vacancy sites. And you can play around with the seed value of that random value node to find different configurations or positions of these vacancy defects. Now let's say instead of a complete vacancy, we want to create a substitutional defect. So where we have created a mono vacancy, we now want to plug in with a different atom. So there are many ways we can do this, but I'm going to do this using the shader nodes. So what you're going to want to do is rather than deleting the geometries, we're actually going to keep all of the chalcogen atoms like so, but we're going to change the color of the chalcogen atoms where we want to create a substitutional defect. So what we want to do is rather than plug the operation of selecting chalcogens that we just created uh, with this node setup, we actually want to store that selection using a store named attribute node, take the Boolean output, plug it into the value, change float to Boolean, and let's name this Boolean output as is substitution. If you're not familiar with the operation of store named attributes, it basically just allows you to store new type of information. You can store floats, integers, vectors, or in this case, a Boolean for every single point of the mesh that we're applying it to. If we open the spreadsheet of the geometry nodes editor and have a look, as well as the attributes that are already stored by the previous node setup, we now have an attribute called is substitution, which is what we just stored with the setup here. What we're going to do now is take the stored attribute and use that to drive the shading of these chalcogen atoms to have different colors at the points of substitution. So let's go ahead and open the shade editor. And so let's go ahead and edit the chalcogen material. Look for an attribute node, a mix shader, duplicate the principal BSDF and turn it into the color that you want to apply to the substituting atom. Into the attribute node, type in the name of that attribute that we just created, which was is substitution. Take the color output and plug that into the factor for the mix shader. Wherever is substitution is true, i.e. we'll have a value of one, we want to apply this different material to the chalcogen atoms. So I'm going to take the chalcogen atoms for the zero input of the mix shader, i.e. where it is false, and take the new principal BSDF shader for where it is true, plug that into the one socket, and then apply that to the output. One thing you'll need to do before this shading effect can work is you need to realize all of these atom instances so that they can have individual materials applied to them. Come back to the geometry node setup. So all we're going to do is look for a realize instances node and drop that in right at the end of the node setup before it goes out of the group output. And now you can see that we have created a bunch of atoms which have a different shading. Maybe this could be something like an oxygen substitution for the chalcogen. And again, just like for the mono vacancy, if I come back into the MOS2 creation node setup, I can increase or decrease the population of these substitutional sites by playing with the probability of the random value node, as well as looking for different configurations using the seed value. Just as a little bonus point, the same kind of principle of deleting specific points to create vacancies also works with hexagonal boron nitride acid, again from CG figures. In the case of the hexagonal boron nitride acid, there is no MOS2 creation node, but the same principle applies. I'm going to go and select all of the nodes responsible for creating the base hexagonal lattice mesh, which is on the left of the node tree. Uh, just move it to the left to give us some space. And all we want to do is before all of the mesh gets piped into the creating atoms and creating bonds section of the node setup, I want to delete some of those vertices again. So just like before, let's look for a delete geometry, plug that into the node setup. And this time it's much simpler. We don't need to select layers. All we need is a random value node plugged into the selection of the delete geometry, making sure that we have points selected. Again, with the random value set to Boolean, we can go ahead and start selecting random vertices or random atom sites and deleting them based on a certain probability. So again, if I set a fairly low probability value, I can delete uh, individual atom sites in order to create realistic uh, vacancy illustrations. And that's basically it for this time. Just a quick tutorial on how to illustrate atomic defects in 2D materials using Blender. Please leave a like and a comment if you found this useful. Subscribe for more content and I will see you all next time. Bye bye for now.